Welcome guys, um, I just want to discuss the fleet maintenance costs and how they work. So the base amount that you pay for a, sh a ship that's in being is 7.5% of the cost of the ship. So if we have a look here, 22392 and the maintenance is 16794342. So, the maintenance is 7.5% of the cost of the ship. Now, if you put your ship into sea control, this goes up to um, 3, uh, 3. This goes up to 12.05%. So, from 7.5 to 12.05. And if you put it in limited, it drops it down, but I can't remember the exact number. So, I just want to show you something. There's, uh, there's a bug in the game, unfortunately. And this might be the thing that's causing the confusion with people. Um, so, if we just select port. So, we've got ships in all different ports. Um, you'll see that the exact same ship is coming in at different costs all across the board. Now this has nothing to do with crew training or any other factors. This is because you're going over the port capacity. The more you are over the port capacity the more it increases the maintenance cost of your ship. So the minimum as we can see here in Dublin is 2519 we change this to in being he's on 1679 so if we have a look to see how much it should be 1679 so you can see here Dublin is not over port capacity so we've got the correct amount where I'll just change him back to sea control where as you can see um, we've got some in Belfast and Cork as well that are not above sea, uh, port capacity, so they're the correct amount. But Barry is over capacity, Dover is over capacity, Helgoland is over capacity. Now, that's the maximum you can go up to, um, which will work out now how much that is. So let's put it on to in being so. That's this guy. So it should be 7.5%. And we're going to stick this into a calculator. So 22, 22392460 divided by 2519152. Then 100 divided by that number is 11.25 percent so it's gone up um, from 7.5 it's gone up another 3.75 which is exactly 50 percent so if you're maximum if you're over the port capacity by maximum then you will have a 50 percent extra maintenance cost so it's not it's not double but it is 50 percent extra and then, as you can see, um, this one in Helgoland is 3778. You can see that this one's 500 more than the minimum, but it's 700 less than um, the maximum. So, I'll show you how the bug can affect this. Um, if you scrap ships that are in a port, it doesn't get rid of their port capacity influence so let's say you've got a 421,000 worth of ships in scapa flow if you scrap them all the port capacity still thinks that there's 421,000 worth of ships in there when actually there's zero because you've scrapped them all so if you now add a ship which I've done there two battle cruisers to scapa flow if we have a look at Scapa Flow, it's coming in at three. Let's uh, change it to a B. 
So it's coming in at 2219. And it should be at 1679. So that's the ghost ship bug, basically. That's what I call it, ghost ship bug. Because there's ghost ships clogging up the port capacity. So if you ever want to scrap ships, send them to a port that you don't care about, like Helgeland, and scrap them in a port that you, you're not bothered about going over port capacity. Because if you scrap them in the ports that you are bothered about, you can end up with the ghost ship bug causing you extra maintenance costs that you shouldn't be paying for. So yeah, I think that's where people are getting confused. Well, it's not surprising you're getting confused because it's a bug. Uh, I have alerted the devs, hopefully they'll get on it, but you never know. I don't even know if they noticed it because the, the video's actually got zero views. So uh, they, they haven't watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> they might have noticed the comment. I don't expect them to watch every video that people post, so but they might have read the comment. Um, one other thing that I noticed was um, if you put your ships into protect and invade. Let's put there we go. So if you put your ships into protect and invade, they actually cost less than in sea control i don't know why this is um i've never actually used invade and protect because when i first started playing the game these didn't work and i just got used to playing with sea control so i just never even bothered trying these so i, su I suppose i should try them and see what's happening <laughs> see what the score is but i've never felt the need to but yeah if you do want to reduce your maintenance cost while you're at sea uh, invade and protect can do that. It's not by a massive amount, but I mean 400k is quite a nice amount, isn't it? So yeah, um, that's one thing that you can do. Now, I did notice another thing while I was playtesting. So if we have a look here, we've got a crew training of 12 and a half million. Well, it's 12.4, so. But let's call it 12 and a half million. Now, we haven't actually got any crew in the crew pool. So, that 12 and a half million is all of the crew that are on the ships. So, let's scrap some ships in Helgeland. So, I've just scrapped 20 ships. And the crew training has actually gone down by 400k. So your crew cost more if they're actually on a ship than they would do if they were just in the crew pool. Um, you still have to pay for them when they're in a crew pool. Let's scrap all the ships apart from three. Really, I shouldn't scrap the ships they're in. I'll just scrap all the ships that are in Helgeland. Okay, if we have a look now, we've dropped down to 3.7 million. Even though we've still got the same amount of crew, because they're not on your ships, they don't cost anywhere near as much to, to train um, in your crew training. So, um... Yeah, you can severely reduce the amount of crew training that you're paying by just not having so many ships active. Um, obviously, you're going to want a certain amount of ships, but there's no point in building more than you need because you'll end up not just paying for the maintenance of the actual ship. So, I think I've probably reduced it too much to, to be able to tell now. But... If you drop, let's uh, drop all these. So we're on 3.73. If we turn all these to limited, you're still paying 3.73. So although you're saving the cost on uh, the maintenance, you're still paying the same amount of cost on the crew itself. So before I had it at, what was it, 12 million? 
So sometimes it's better to scrap the ships if you're not using them than it is to mothball them or, or uh, well, mothballing actually will work. Um, but I'm not on the latest patch because I've heard bad things about the crew on the latest patch. So uh, it might things might be different on the very latest patch. I don't actually know. But um, it, if you're not going to mess around with the crew, which I've heard you shouldn't do on the latest patch, and you're just setting your ships to limited, um, you're better off if you're not actually using them to scrap them when you're not using them. So I'm at peace at the moment. I don't need these ships. I can just scrap them all. Then when I'm ready to go to war, I can rebuild them all. Uh, you'll end up saving yourself maintenance cost and crew training cost by doing that. So you can save a, a hell of a lot of money. Um, that's pretty much everything in terms of maintenance. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to uh, have a look at or to mention was the power projection. So let's get a ship. Let's send these to uh, Helgeland. So this next thing, it's not concerning maintenance, it's concerning power projection. But they're kind of both tied in with each other, so I'll just add it on to, to the end of this. So I'm just going to turn all the ships onto end being. Okay, so if we have a look at our power projection, we've got 7,400. 3,500, so 7,400, 3,500. Now if we exit to main menu, and then just enter the campaign again. So the previous numbers were 7,400 and 3,500. So it didn't change much, but we've actually got 300 more power projection. That's the same. Okay, so now what I want to show you, if we send a ship out into a task fleet, We've got 709 power projection from this ship. Now he's obviously in sea control because he's the task fleet and he's got 709. Now if we exit to main menu again, because he was in in being when he was just in Helgeland. So basically when you send a ship out when he was in being or any other sea role, um, when you send a ship out into a task fleet, it changes the role to sea control, so you pay more on the maintenance, but it doesn't actually update the power projection until you exit the game and re-enter, and then suddenly I've got double the amount of power projection. So you get double for being in sea control than you do in, uh, in being, but it doesn't take effect until you actually exit the game and re-enter again. So one other thing as well ships that are in port do not get their power projection increased when you change their sea roll if you leave them in port so um, we've got 7036 if we change everybody's sea roll of all the people in port to sea control it's still 7036 
So technically, now once we exit the game and re-enter, it should double it to 14,072. So let's re-enter the campaign. And it's still 7,036. So changing your ships to sea control um, while leaving them in port does not do anything to the power projection so if you want extra power projection in fact changing it to sea control might not do anything to ships that are in port apart from cost more so if you're ever leaving ships in ports just turn them to in being um, it might affect uh, the mission generation I don't actually know it used to uh, back in core patch 0 0.2 I think it was 0 0.02 um, so let's test it now with limited so obviously 7036 let's exit game and re-enter and see if it's still 7036 or if limited does actually change it or not So limited does actually reduce it, but C control did not increase it, which is interesting. So obviously just don't use C control if you're leaving your ships in port. If you want to use C control, set them to task fleets. If you want extra power projection, send your ship out into a task fleet then exit the game and go back in to get the extra power projection that you're meant to get. Okay, one final thing, which is something I don't actually know, because I never do. I never do it, so um, we're going to change the C roll to invade. We're on 1419, so let's have a little look to see if the C roll on invade gives us a different power projection. So it's still 1419, so it gives you the same amount of power projection, and it's cheaper on the maintenance. So I don't know how it impacts the emission generation, but it's cheaper and gives you the same amount of power projection. So Invade is the best role to use um, for power projection at the minimum price. So let's test it again with Protect to see if Protect has any change. So that actually put the power projection up. So it turns out that Protect is the best um, power projection for cost ratio. So there you go. That's something I didn't know. If you want power projection at the minimum cost, put your ships on Protect roll. Like I say, I don't know what it does in terms of mission generation because I've never actually bothered using it. Um, divisions. Selecting divisions, no. Yeah, I know it's on here somewhere. What's it called? Uh, battle map. No, campaign. Mm, fleet. Here we go. Okay, 
it's not there. Task forces. Invade and protect options will also affect the missions that are generated, favouring an overall offensive or defensive behaviour. So it's work in progress, which is why I never bother using it, because anything that says that, I always just assume it's not going to work properly. Um, so let's have a look. Choose and invade increases the offensive behaviour against enemy transports, but reduces the defensive against raiding transports on your own. Uh, raiding on your own transports doesn't say anything about mission generation. Um, so this bit is saying about mission generation, but this bit isn't. Later, the end. So basically, later says that it's not implemented. So. In terms of mission generation, I assume it works exactly the same as Sea Control, which is basically good. So, um, if you're playing purposely for power projection, then choose Protect. Um, if you're playing for power projection and you want to sink the enemy convoys, then put Invade on. Um, so, it seems like both of them are a better choice than Sea Control at the moment because they haven't implemented the mission generation so I'll, I'll play around with that to uh, to actually see see if it's better or worse but as you can see with my cash I never have a problem with cash in this game just always go for naval budget plus even at the expense of GDP plus oh I suppose that's one thing I could mention it's got nothing to do with maintenance but I can just tack it on at the end um, when you're at war uh, you'll get minus numbers to your growth. Now, I, I was at minus 5% um, just a few months ago, and now I'm at plus 17%. Basically, as soon as you finish the war, it just reverts straight back to what it should be. So, the only time that you can damage people's economy is by staying in a war with them, but that means that it's damaging your own at the same time. So basically, you can't damage other people's economy without damaging your own. And as soon as you exit the war, you get that growth back immediately. So, uh, so yeah, just just don't even worry about growth. The only permanent way that you can damage people is by reducing their transport capacity. Um, so I can't I can't remember what the numbers are, but basically, if you're below 100% transport capacity. Uh, every few months I don't know how it works uh, I, I managed to figure it out but um, every few months you lose um, say I don't know what it is 300k something like that and then I, I'm guessing that the further you are below um, the less amount of time it takes to lose 300k so by the time you're down to zero you might lose 300k every turn I don't actually know but the, the devs have changed the way that transport capacity numbers work. And now that it increases much faster than it used to. At one point it was increasing by 0.03%. So this is like 15 times faster. So it's really difficult to damage people's economy with the transport capacity than it used to be. So, um, and obviously while you're sinking their transports, you're at war with them. And while you're at war with them, you're losing growth. And obviously that's hurting your own economy. So it's basically impossible to damage somebody else's economy while keeping your own like, good. So just don't even worry about other people's economy. Just, just destroy the ships. Um, they do actually lose... Uh, massive amounts of GDP when they revolt. So the best way to actually um, damage people's economy is by making them revolt. And then um, once they've revolted, you can then sue for peace. That's the best way to damage their economy. It's not permanent. Um, what happens is they lose a certain amount. I, it's, it's strange because sometimes they've lost 25 million. Other times they've lost one million, and I have no idea why. What affects how much they lose when they revolt? No idea whatsoever. But um, if they lose 25 million, for example, 
over the next 12 months, they get um, two, 2.1 million back each month um, until it reverts back to exactly what it was when they lost that 25 million. So basically, it just sets the GDP back um, f by 12 months. Uh, but it's not permanent, obviously. The only difference that it would make is the growth is obviously reduced but for by 12 months um so yeah it's not a permanent reduction by a massive amount it's just a very tiny amount for 12 months so yeah that's everything that i can think of so it's been a bit of a hodgepodge of maintenance power projection and economy but i think that's uh, i think that's good enough for this video so hope it's been helpful guys take care and i shall see you soon